It's open night in baseball. The Yankees take on the Red Sox at Fenway Park. Here now with Dama Mori, Hartford Kern, baseball writer, a regular on the radio show back in the day. Always good to have you in the studio, Dom. Hmm. Baseball impresario. <laughs> hey, it doesn't get any better than this, right? Not no. Yankees and Sox. Opening day? Yeah, you got to work on your Boston accent a little bit. That, that, <laughs> that, like, could, yeah. that could be better. Fenway yeah, Pack? Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's about as good as it gets for the first game. World champion Yankees, right? They pulled this thing off last year. Now the big question is the aging Yankees. You've got guys now. You've got Derek Jeter. You've got Mariano Rivera, the core. You've got uh, Posada. Getting older, they're off a great year. But to what degree do you continue sort of to commit blindly without having a big price to pay? Well, I think in, in, in the Yankees' case, they don't have much choice, and in, in, they don't really have anyone to replace those guys at this point. Right. But I thought last year what you saw the Yankees were, even though they spent a lot of money, they spent it a lot smarter than they have in the past. Players who were younger, who were in their prime. You know, you don't mind committing to uh, a Mark Teixeira. Right. That'll be really the new core of the Yankees when these guys Great are Great player, gone. first baseman. Yeah, so I think the Yankees are, are gradually becoming younger. But as far as the transition at shortstop, the transition at closer, the transition at catcher, which is going to be very important, you know, that the Yankees don't quite have that figured out yet. But, uh, but for one more year, I think you have to like their chances. Like the old Boston Celtics, though, with Parrish, McHale, and Bird, where they hung on to the long, and when it was finally over, it took 10 years to rebuild. Of course, the Yankees had the deep pockets and always, you know, replenish. But transitioning from Jeter to whomever is going to be a... Big challenge. You wouldn't want to be the guy who follows him. Right. You know, you'll want to be the guy who follows the guy who follows him. Or the guy who says, Jeter, it's time for you to go on either, right? Right. You don't want to be that guy either. But, uh, but you know, from what we saw last year, Stan, I think, I think we have a ways to go before you get to that point with him. He, he looked great, right? He's still, he's still a, a top-shelf offensive player, probably as good as anybody at that position except Hanley Ramirez. And his defense, I think, is still better than he gets credit for. All the naysayers are saying the guy's lost his range. He can't go to it, but it's right. He's lost a step or two. All he does is keep getting rings. Well, you know what? Uh, and I always used to say this when I covered the team every day. Jeter and A-Rod never looked better than those three months in 2004 when they had John Olerud at first base. That when they had somebody who could pick up the ball, they could play deeper, they could take more chances. Teixeira had that impact on them last year. Mm -hmm. Teixeira made... All the other three infielders much, much better, including Jeter. So having a good first baseman there you know, has really made a difference. Let's talk about the Sox. We know we're in Red Sox country. They're waiting to hear what Don thinks about the Sox nation. Same situation. They've got some guys that are getting older, and yeah. uh, they may have a short leash on a few players there, right, if things they, don't go well. They do, and I think, you know, they, they went, they're kind of on a one-year plan, Stan. I, I think they, they've got a lot of players in their farm system that they liked and aren't ready yet. So you saw them go into free agency and it was not a great free agent class. They went for the one-year deal, the two-year deal, to bring in some older players for stopgap purposes. And, you know, as we know, they, they, they went for run prevention. That's kind of the new in in baseball. Uh, but, and, but it does Which work. Which means bad defense, right? Well, no, no. It means it, they're going to have very, very good defense right. and very, very good pitching. The question is going to be is whether have they given up too much offense for that defense. That's going to be the question for them. Have you they? Know, they may have. Uh, you know, I, I think when you look at, at the players that they've brought in, you know, if the Yankees signed Mike Cameron and Marco Scudero and Beltre, they'd probably be getting killed in New York. Uh, you know, the Red Sox are... Center feeling short stuff? Yeah. I mean, Cameron, as you know, Cameron was at the Mets. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a great defensive player, but at 36, he might not be the center fielder that he once was. And at Fenway Park, range in the outfield is negated. And if it's off the wall, you know, no matter how fast you are, you're not going to get it. You know, Marco Scudero really had a big year at shortstop for the Jays last year. But half the games are on artificial turf. You can play deeper. The ball hops truer. So he may not be the same shortstop on, on the Fenway infield, which can be very tricky. Uh, you know, Adrian Beltre, though, from everyone uh, will tell you he's a dynamite defensive player. You know, one thing, and this is anecdotal, which I know the stat guys hate, but I covered a game last year when Lester was pitching, and it, and it seemed like every ball that was even tapped to the left side went through the infield. And now, with, you know, with, with a, a improvement at short and third base, you know, it should make their pitching better. So I would look for them to be right where they were last year in that 95-96 win range, and also the Rays will be up in that range as Tampa. well. Okay. So there's not much margin for error among those three teams. You might have the three best teams in baseball in one division, and one gets nosed out of the playoffs. New York Mets now. Let's go. We have to bring in the Mets. You know, there's, there's the a Mets. strong bias on this show. New York Mets, injury factor. Nothing really changed. Injuries, right. injuries, injuries. Carlos Beltran is right. still hurt. Still hurt. Jose Reyes is still hurt. Yeah. Santana's hurt. Well, 
you know, I, I think by just the law of averages, they've got to be healthier than they were last year. And if they are healthier, it will help them. I think Jason Bay is going to help them a lot. Uh, I think he's... Uh, came from the Sox? Came from the Sox. Um, you know, it's funny. You hear about what a bad outfielder he was. Every, the games I covered, I thought he was a really good outfielder. And I think he'll certainly be an improvement for the Mets in their outfield. And he's a good hitter for that ballpark. He's more of a pull hitter. You, know, you don't want to be a right center hitter in that ballpark, as we saw with David mm-hmm. Wright last year. Good clubhouse guy. Good clubhouse guy. So I think he's going to help them. And he's a consistent 100 RBI guy. You're not just signing a guy off of one big year. He's been a consistent RBI guy. So I think their lineup is going to be pretty good. Mm-hmm. I think their defense will be a little bit better. Pitching. Problem with them, after the number one guy, a lot of question marks on their pitching. So does everybody else. But, you know, it's going to be a lot of things have to break right for the Mets to challenge the Phillies. The one thing to watch out for, if you're a Met fan, the one thing to look out for, that'll be a telltale sign that it'll be a good season. The one thing? Yeah. I think it's going to be, um, you know, early on what, what the number two and three starters do. Pitching them, Pitching bottom wise, line. yeah. But for them, I, I think they have a very good team if, you know, from the number one starter and everything else, they have a great closer. I think they have a pretty good team. Right. But those two, three, four, five starters are the question marks. Depth. Depth. Yeah. If they're healthy and they pitch well to their capabilities, you, know, you never know what you're going to get from Oliver Perez. You don't know what you're going to get from Maine. But if those guys are healthy and pitch to their capabilities, you know, they've got the lineup. They have a pretty good year. Real quick, 30 seconds. The Yankees, the one thing for Yankee fans to watch for that will be an indication that they're off to their second consecutive championship. Well, I think last year everybody stayed, for the most part, everyone stayed healthy. Uh, and that's what's going to have to happen again. I think, you know, uh, you know, if they get hit with a bunch of injuries, particularly in their rotation, they're going to be in trouble. Now, their four starting pitchers have a, a recent track record of being healthy. They've strung together a lot of 200-inning seasons in a row. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I- if that continues, they're going to be fine. But Chemistry uh, is good, right? So it's all about health. Chemistry is good, but I Red, think it's health. So Red Sox, so one thing, again, if you're a Sox fan, one thing to watch for to say, okay, I think we're on good good path here. Well, I think what, what the Red Sox need is for Beltre, Cameron, uh, possibly Scudero, Drew, to all hit a little bit better than they're projected. If those guys have the same years they had last year, uh, it probably won't be enough offense. But if those guys and David Ortiz, if, they, if people get off to good starts hitting, mm-hmm. then I think it'll take a lot of the pressure off that part of their game. If, if guys get off, they get off to a slow start offensively, the pressure will start to mount. Oh, they didn't do enough offensively in the offseason. All right, the pressure's mounting here for us to wrap up. Don Moore, your time of season now, Don. This is your time. And Garrett Arginis is promising good, good uh, weather for Sunday for night. So I'm going to hold him to that. All right, we're going to have you back on because we like to have you on as a regular. Thanks to all our guests, Sam Gray, Juan Figueroa, Don Amore, and also, folks, you can check us out and send your comments to us at ctnow.com slash Dan and friend us on Facebook. Become a fan of the Stan Simpson Show, although they're doing away with the fan stuff, so we'll figure it out. We're on Twitter, too, so look out for our tweets. Lori Perez and The Real Story are next for the good folks here at Fox 61. I'm Stan Simpson. We'll see you next week.